and inside what I found was the horror. This may bring a little bit of sadness to some of you because we are going to be repurposing Kiwi's old enclosure. And we started this week with a video about a certain beetle, about a certain bug, and therefore we are going to end this week with also a video about a certain bugs and beetles. Yeah, firstly, uh, the guys that we are going to be adding to the Kiwi's enclosure are the babies from Spiny Assassin Bugs. And here is the one, also down here we have the other one and the third one. Uh, I had a bunch of babies, but I gave away some, I gave away majority actually, and also a couple of uh, small ones died, and now I'm, I ended up with only three of these. So I need to be extra careful because I want to restart the colony once again to have a bunch of them inside of this enclosure but but not too many as i had in the bigger enclosure that was way too much way too many and if we check the old kiwis enclosure i've been taking care of it really well so therefore this plant that i have inside is growing really really nice even better than when i had the kiwi inside you see it covered almost half of the enclosure so basically now it is feeding for the beetles i mean for the spiny bugs it is already feeding for them we don't need to do uh, much with it we just need to clean the sides a bit and also the lid and add a couple of sloped cork bugs so they can molt and hide and stuff like that but generally we will leave it as it is because you see there is already one cork bug so uh, i think uh, if we add just one like this bigger one right there in this empty spot that we are going to be set so that is one thing it won't take a, lo a long time to do that after that i have something else for you i need to show you the development in this enclosure because oh you see <laughs> some bugs are lurking some bugs we have new bugs i mean they were inside for quite a while but in form of larva so they hatched like a month ago or so and after we are done with that also i want to see if i can feed on the video the great diving beetle from monday's video yeah that is so yeah let's start but of course fear not even though i am reusing this old kiwi's enclosure that doesn't mean that i don't plan to get another jumping spider in the future i definitely want to get it but currently it is still pretty cold outside so i don't really want to order anything from from other places so jumping spider will need to wait for another month or two i think it will be warm enough in in a month maybe probably yeah also this cleaning doesn't need to be really thorough i just want to remove the webbing to make it a bit prettier but generally it will stay as it is there are some water stain buildups as you can see but i will just leave it as it is just gonna try and wash it a little bit but that's all there we go more than good enough so cork bark for this side and first we need to take it from their enclosure of course but i need to get the beetles off it no they are not beetles they are bugs so you little buddy off you go down go down no don't fight come on and also you go down that is up if you didn't know and this one is aggressive small and aggressive come on chill dude oh seriously go off come on man don't play with me there we go the cork bark is now safe and actually now looking at their enclosure i can see a lot of mites lurking around and i can understand it why because there is a lot of half-eaten roaches inside you see like this one and also you see mites mites everywhere so maybe i shouldn't reuse this cork bark i should wash it thoroughly first but not here because i don't have a warm water still inside of this house <laughs> uh, i will get a new cork bark piece just a second i actually took two cork bark pieces the more the merrier and as i said i will just squeeze them somewhere in the back like that that's the one and the second one maybe hmm. do i even need the second one for just three beetles yeah I, I, I want to add one but a bit smaller than this one uh, this one will be better it is oops it is a bit narrower so it will fit better all right just a tiny bit of sand for some texture at this moment and voila the enclosure is ready i mean it was already 
ready, but it is even more ready now. Adding these guys should be a little bit easier. And just go. There, that's one. And the second one. Perfect. And bringing in the third one. This one is the biggest, as you can see. Also, let's check if someone is hungry. Are you hungry? Maybe in your new environment. No, he is not. And this one? No, they aren't hungry, unfortunately. But the view is now really nice, right? Especially this green contrasting with the bugs, with their yellow slash orange slash red coloration. Yeah, it is looking pretty good. Not gonna lie, I think that once this one molts, it will already be an adult. I'm pretty sure, or maybe I'm wrong. And the third one is now hiding over there. That one is the, the skinniest. I would prefer to attempt to fit that, but it's hiding now. Mm. Are you maybe? Oh yes, he is hungry, excellent. This was one unplanned feeding, but a welcome one for sure. Okay, now to show you the other beetles. It's a big enclosure and oh no, the beetle was actually eating a banana and now as I was moving the enclosure, it is trying to hide. Ah, what a timing, what a timing. But this is the enclosure and you know that it is my attempt of communal enclosure of land snails, uh, these two guys. Also, there is third one somewhere uh, buried inside. And these beetles, the sun beetles. I, a while ago, I received a bunch of grubs, a bunch of beetle larvas that I put inside. And now those larvas are turning into beetles and slowly coming outside. The thing is this, when I originally received the grubs, I put all the beetles, all the grubs together in one box, one big plastic box with a lot of substrate, and I took the biggest larva and I put it in a separate enclosure. The idea was I will try to record the stages of the larva as it grows and as it turns into a cocoon, and then as eventually it hatches as the beetle. That kind of failed, but not really, because there was a development. As you know, in a video I built this enclosure and I moved the, all the grubs from that tub into this big, big enclosure. And while I was removing the, the larvas from that plastic tub, I found one uh, cocoon. And in fact, the cocoon looks like this, you see. And this is in fact not the cocoon, but the cocoon was inside of this some sort of egg-shaped uh, enclosure that larvas make for themselves in order to protect from the predators and other, I don't know, bad stuff, maybe bad weather or whatever, but they make this, this egg. So, while I was digging through that substrate, I found one egg, uh, and this is not the one. But at that time, I wasn't 100% sure if that is what I found. I was assuming that the larva was inside of this, but I wasn't like 100% sure. And regardless, I took it and I also put it in the separate enclosure where I kept the biggest larva. Periodically, I was checking if this cocoon hatched and months passed, nothing changed. Eventually, that biggest larva that I had in that separate container also turned into a cocoon that was protected inside of this case. Uh, and I was starting to be kind of impatient because that original cocoon was already supposed to hatch and it wasn't hatching. So I decided to uh, push my luck and open this protective case. And inside what I found was the horror. For some reason I didn't record the video. I, actually, I just took a couple of pictures that I'm going to show you, but I don't know why I didn't took video. I just, unfortunately, I forgot to do that. But the insides of the protective case were filled with worms, as you can see, and I assume that those are not larvas that they used to call gnats, because I didn't know that G is actually silent. It is written with G, but it is not pronounced. And I always wonder, I'm always confused with uh, that type of English words. I mean, why are you writing the letter if you don't mean to pronounce? Uh, what's the point? I mean, what, really? Okay, never mind. But I assume that those worms inside were actually their larvas. My assumption is that the cocoon died. I mean, the larva that was inside of the cocoon died and then nuts came and do their job because they don't really kill a live animal. They hatch their eggs on already dead animals. So uh, since I discovered that, I decided to open 
the other egg, the other protective case, that was uh, this one. And thankfully that one was all right. Inside I actually found the cocoon and the cocoon was alive and well, so I took it outside, put it in a plastic box and I let it hatch. And sooner or later, I didn't really write, wrote the date, but the beetle hatched and it is one of two guys that are currently inside. I'm not sure which one, of course. But yeah, unfortunately I didn't record the actual process of beetle emerging from the cocoon. I wasn't here when, when that happened, but yeah, it happened. <laughs> and now where did that guy go? Oh, sorry. But look at this. For some reason, these snails are the breeding ground for springtails. They are loving the snails and they are always all over them. Snails and springtails go together really well. And you see that other snail is munching on the bone. Yeah, they need the calcium from that. Anyhow, regardless, where did the beetle go? Oh, you see? They can dig really good. Come out, little guy. So I can record him, of course. Go there. Walk around, please. Show off your walking skills. Can you do that for me? Or not? It doesn't really matter, but these are the beetles. And you see, they are not really big. I mean, we are used to, in the hobby, to much bigger beetles. But still, they are really pretty and they have interesting color patterns, really pretty color pattern. And they don't do really much, you see, I need to push him in order for him to move, but there he goes. And there he stops. <laughs> Come on, little guy, move. So smooth. Okay, I'm gonna bring you back in. Hopefully soon more beetles will emerge and then they will start to multiply. Oh, sorry. Come on, go. Now you are free to once again bury in the dirt. Or of course you can munch on the banana, whatever you like. So that's the story in regards to these sun beetles. This enclosure will definitely be more interesting once uh, there is like 10 to 15 beetles outside simultaneously. That is what I'm looking for and hoping to achieve uh, in the long run. But until then, they will be like this. So now another and hopefully we will be able to feed the diving beetle, but that is if we manage to find it, because currently I cannot spot it. I have no idea where it is. And I know that it is inside because I seen it like five or 10 minutes ago when I checked, but now there is no sign of it. <laughs> but it needs to come out in order to breathe air. So therefore we will do a time jump. Okay, okay, okay. It was actually outside now. It just went up blah, 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 and then quickly down. I didn't even manage to, oh, you see, there it is. So there is the beetle. Okay, now we can proceed with the video, with the feeling that is. And I don't really know how this will go. Let me grab a roach first and then we will go from there. They are predators, but honestly, I'm not sure if the roach will do the trick. We just need to try and see. And I'll actually just drop it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it just looks like I scared her. Hmm. If she is this skittish, I'm not really sure if this will even work. Uh, I can try and grab the roach and bring it down to her or just wait once again for her to come up. And then when she's up, I will put the roach on the side and try to bring it uh, under her, something like that. But now she's once again gone, you see, hiding somewhere, probably under one, maybe under that leaf. I'm gonna take the roach. I will put the camera down and wait until she comes out again. Are you kidding me? What a perfect timing. Thank you, camera. I mean, it was my fault not changing the battery in advance because this is what always happens. I can see the beetle now and maybe we were lucky to see it submerge, but <laughs> come on, make up your mind. Do you want to go down or up? <laughs> and now, of course, unlike in last video, you can see that now it can submerge without any problems. Let's see if we can get this done. The roach is going. Hmm? You want to grab maybe this roach? <laughs> no, not really, huh? Can you like stop? I just want to feed you. Mm -hmm.
Guys, I think that this won't happen. Looks like for this I will need to get some sort of small fish or something like that for it to catch. Because apparently roaches aren't as interesting. At least we know that we tried. So, regardless of this failure, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page and also a merch page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon. Bye!